Tonight, there is new video out showing that controversial prisoner exchange between U.S. forces and the Taliban. Army Sergeant Bo Bergdahl, he was held by the Taliban, as you know, for five years after reportedly deserting his post, and he was swapped for five Taliban leaders who were being held at Guantanamo Bay. His fellow soldiers say he was on guard duty when he abandoned his post, and at least six troops have died while searching for him. And again, this is all secondhand here, but there certainly were rescue missions and fatalities. We're going to learn much more about this. I feel like he deserted us. Um, I, I, he knew what he was doing when he deserted us. Uh, it was premeditated. Um, it was thought out. He was not captured. He was not uh, forcefully taken off the base. He left on his own accord. He was very upset with um, like the, the Army's focus on how we were handling the war. Tonight, let me bring in uh, three friends of mine, our legal panel here, Doug Von Oyes, founding partner at Carson Von Oyes, focusing on corporate misconduct, selected by the Legal 500 as one of the most influential trial lawyers in the nation. Jim Kasouris, criminal defense attorney in Manhattan, lecturing at New York Law School and a visiting professor at the University of Birmingham in England. And Mayo Bartlett, attorney, former chief of the Bias Crimes Unit at the Westchester County DA's office, and someone who actually busted his knee blocking a shot, and at our age, how many can say that? Okay. A jam. A jam, yes. Well, <laughs> might have been a layup. We don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, I, listen, we talked about this from the political context, but there's also legal questions as, as well. And I'm going to let you guys uh, uh, play in both pools, if we will. And I'll, I'll start with you, Doug, and work, work my way around. Um, I've had people on from the military say you leave no man behind, but then I've heard others say, uh, you know, you do set precedent here when you're trading, you know, uh, when you're trading and dealing with terrorists and negotiating with terrorists, you could be setting precedent and also putting more troops in harm's way. And then finally, where the legality of this comes in, does it make a difference if he was captured on the battlefield or if he walked away from his post in the dead of night um, and... Even if we've made the trade and he's back eventually on American soil, should he face potential charges for it? What do you think? Well, I mean, I think that it's pretty clear that, I mean, it would just be an allegation that he deserted his post. I, I don't think there's any rule that would say, you know, if you did desert your post, we don't look for you anymore, and if you're captured, we mm -hmm. forget it. So I think that you, there is probably a duty for the Army to still recover people that are, you know, in the armed services, in, in the forces. I mean, I think that's a completely different thing. We know this is a huge political problem now. I don't think they did it because they felt like they, they really wanted to. I mean, I think feel like they had to. I mean, that's the way and there I'm was conversations whether or not he was in major declining health here and this would be the last opportunity. But legally here, um, should, after he's been through the counseling and obviously all the medical treatment, you know, if uh, you were a JAG attorney, right, uh, and they said, well, guys, what do we think here? Should they do a full investigation how he was captured? And if it turns out he did leave his post, he went AWOL, if you will, right, should he face charges as a consequence? Or, hey, you know what, five years, he was in uh, uh, under lock and key. I think he did his time. Which one? Well, I, I think that it depends on what the investigation reveals. You know, there are some reports that say that he was disoriented and he just left his post. That's one thing. Uh, on the other hand, what, what was being suggested by, by the officer in that clip was that you know, he didn't just leave his post, he deserted and wasn't captured. Uh, those are two entirely different things. And if he left his post, wasn't captured, and joined the other side, so to speak, then I think that that presents some very difficult problems. If, on the other hand, he left his post and was captured because he was disoriented or you know, even fed up, I, I think he, he doesn't face charges. It depends on what the investigation reveals. I think that when you look at these cases, it's easy when you're not serving to underestimate what people who are serving go through each and every day and what they go through when they come home. And uh, when you really stop and you, you contemplate this, I think that certainly you go and you try to get him, okay? You try to have him uh, recovered. I don't think you leave people behind. Uh, how you do that is another issue. And, and obviously, you want to have good intelligence when you do it. But if, in fact, there was a transgression that was really that great, then you know you have an investigation. You can always bring uh, prosecution militarily if that's the case. We don't know that that's the case right now. Um, I think that certainly, uh, I think as Doug said, you know you want to wait and find out exactly what occurred. Right now we're going based only on rumor. And based on rumor actually, I mean he's being 
considered a traitor by, by a lot of people in the United States, but we don't have all the well, information. It, it's funny you use the word traitor, because this next individual um, he has been called that. Um, some people call him a patriot. I'm talking about Edward Snowden, the NSA whistleblower. He has said that he is not and has never served as a spy for Russia, uh, even though he's on Russian soil. Now, NSA Chief Admiral Michael Roger is backing those claims, saying he doesn't think Snowden was or is a spy. However, some congressional leaders, they would disagree. I believe there's a reason he ended up in the hands, uh, the loving arms of an FSB agent in Moscow. Uh, I don't think that's a coincidence. Edward Snowden is a traitor to our country. He's damaged uh, our ability to keep Americans safe here uh, and abroad. And there's, there's no other word that should describe him other than a traitor. Now, Mr. Snowden, 29 years of age, who is responsible for one of the largest intelligence leaks in NSA history, told NBC News he did the American public a favor, and he didn't mind breaking the law. I think the most important idea is to remember that there have been times throughout American history where what is right is not the same as what is legal. Sometimes to do the right thing, you have to break a law. Now, it's interesting, the public's... Uh, take on this one. The Huffington Post poll taken in the fall shows Americans divided over whether they think Snowden is in fact patriot or traitor. You can see the numbers there yourself here. Um, polls done since then, they show more people are giving uh, the benefit of the doubt, albeit still by a slight margin. Okay, he touched on a point, um, Mayo, that uh, I'll start with you and I'll work my way around this way. Sometimes what's right isn't what's legal. I'm not comparing him to Rosa Parks here, okay? Uh, because she didn't decide to go flee to an enemy uh, nation here. My take on this. If you want to expose something that you think is wrong, God bless you. But you know what? Other people have faced the music when they've done so, and they haven't gone to Russia. They haven't gone to, uh, uh, you know, China, um, and basically sought out the best deal. If you, you're an American citizen, I think he could have used more discretion. I think there could have been more avenues. But where do you fall on this? Is he right that what's right isn't always what's legal? Well, it's been suggested in the past that people like Muhammad Ali, who are conscientious objectors, um, paid the price. I don't think there should have been a price to pay there. So sometimes people who really have done uh, nothing really wrong uh, at the end of the day do pay a terrible price. When you look at what he allegedly did, I think that the polls showed, uh, what is it, 51% yeah. approved and believed he was a hero because that's when they were talking about the information uh, that we were learning about what the NSA does to us. And when we're the targets of the NSA, then we, we are less forgiving than when uh, foreign countries are the targets of the NSA. But if you were to, uh, to place an Edward Snowden in, in Nazi Germany, and Edward Snowden was to say, look, you know, we're about to do these terrible things. We're going we're to engage in these acts which are going to be known as the Holocaust. Is he a traitor at that Right, point? but to connote the two, Jimmy, of, of, of being there right at the advent of when the Third Reich um, literally extinguished populations to there was discretion that could have been used here and wasn't. He did not go through, I believe, all possible channels to the intelligence communities, whether it be in the House or the Senate. Now, maybe they would have turned to Deppie or whatever else, but just to do a document dump out there and then claim you're a hero later on, I don't know. Um, I don't, you know, I, we're going to get in debate. I have a feeling about this, uh, Doug and I, but where do you fall on this one? I mean, patriot, traitor, I know I'm Cretan things, but I'm not giving you a middle way. Which one do you call? <clears throat> it's, you're not giving me a middle way. It's, it's a semantics. Patriot, forget that. He's a criminal. He committed a crime, and a crime that can have very serious implications for our country. I understand his purpose. I understand his frustration. And I understand that what he ultimately did caused some very significant changes in the way we, we conduct ourselves in this country. It was also good for this country that no, we no knew doubt. It. I'm just talking no about doubt. the means to an end. No doubt. Exactly. And, and the point is, is you know, when you entrust people in his position with secrets that can decimate our security, then that cannot go unpunished. And that's not the way you do it. Like you say, you don't do a huge document dump. You know, everybody talks about what good it did for our country. It did a lot of bad for our country, too, because he exposed a lot of other things, a lot of other secrets, a lot of other intelligence that we had gathered on, on other countries and, and other, other individuals. 
have at it. Well, uh, yes. You know, if you play the you know villain traitor game, the problem is the case is not being made that what he did has compromised something. If you look at his motivations personally, it's not a guy that got a big bag of money and ran off. He's in another country right now. He can't go back to his mother country. And nobody, as far as I can hear, has made out the case to tell us why, by him telling us he, he foiled some sort of uh, some in information gathering network that was stopping actual uh, terrorist occurrences. I just haven't heard it yet. I've heard that you compromised it. Now people know what we're doing. But you're not, nobody's telling me you know, what the damage was to our security. Well, Doug, in fact, I mean, if you really look at it, he stopped uh, our government from committing crimes. So we're, we're discussing now whether Obama is, has, has broken the law in uh, you know, trying to secure the freedom of, of this young man in Afghanistan. But he stopped more by crimes not getting congressional by not getting right. congressional yeah. approval. But he has really exposed uh, much more than that in terms of illegal activity on behalf of our government. But, but do you believe, guy. but you do, do you believe that we saw this with the Watergate Papers, okay, we see, we, when people have done this in the past, they've risked prosecution for it. Do you believe it's a distinction with a difference that he decided to go, you know, see if Chavez would take him in, uh, you know, uh, or, uh, you know, or if he was going to end up in China, if he was going to go to Russia, they shopped around to just think about who he went to here to find and get safe haven, okay? Do you think at the end of the day it matters how he did this rather than what he did? Do I think it matters? Listen, he's a 29-year-old guy. I don't think he's willing to give his life by, by dying. So he wants to go someplace, but he still wants to get the information out there. I think it's human nature. If he went to somebody, the United Kingdom, they would turn him right over. So he's looking for a place to go. This guy got nothing out of this. Not okay, how about final question. I know we're really heavy. Do you think that if he works out a deal to come back to the States, he should sit inside a cell. He did break the law. No one's debating that part. Should Scooter, he, Scooter should he Libby, pay a price for what he did? Scooter Libby broke a law. He outed an active CIA agent, and uh, President Bush said that it would be uh, you know, absolutely improper if he spent a day in jail. He got pardoned. Well, right. Okay, pardoned. but I'm saying if the president chooses not to pardon him, okay, I'm making it tough here, guys. Should this guy see the inside of a cell? Absolutely. What about the next guy who's in his position and he decides that it'd be for the good of the country? We're telling to some freelancers. Doug, I'm with him. I'm saying we're telling freelancers here: use your own discretion. I mean, he swore an oath. I mean, to I mean, he that was his job. Nobody made him go work for the NSA. Now I'm with you. I'm glad some of the stuff came out. As but, am I. But you know what? You know, you don't get to just pick and choose what you find is or isn't the distasteful. The way I understand it, the oath is to the Constitution. And if he believes that there's violations of the Constitution, if he believes it, then if his oath is to the Constitution, you know he's going to do something. He learned how TV works. He, he <laughs> saved his best time to smack me right before the break, so he got the last word. Well done. All right. We have another tough debate, though, on the other side. Two 12-year-old girls in Wisconsin. I, I can't even describe um, uh, what must have been going on in their minds. They're charged now as adults for very adult crimes, allegedly stabbing their so-called friend 19 times here in an effort to kill her. How does the law determine when it's okay to try children as adults? We'll talk about that after this.